Yo, welcome to part 5 of the highly anticipated Elasticsearch tutorial series. I am your instructor, Jason Den, and in this video, we're going to finally get into the really fun stuff of Elasticsearch, which is searching. In the last video, we bootstrapped Elasticsearch with the movie lens data set using the log stash so that we can have a relatively big data set to work with. If you haven't done so, I highly suggest that you go do part 4 before continuing. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of searching with Elasticsearch. We're going to talk briefly about the goal of searching and demonstrate various queries using the match and match phrase queries, working with dates using the range operator, sorting, pagination, slightly more complex queries with the bool and multi-match queries, working with exact terms using the keyword operator, and working with nifty features such as fuzziness and highlighting. Also, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. I really enjoy making these videos and actually seeing your support with likes and subscriptions is a big motivator. Before we get our hands dirty, it's important to take a step back and realize that the goal of searching is to return the most relevant documents. And in the world of Elasticsearch, relevancy is determined by the search item score. The default scoring algorithm used in Elasticsearch is BM25, which ranks documents' relevance based on three overarching criteria. Term frequency, which says that the more a term appears in a field, the more important it is. Inverse document frequency, which says that the more documents that contain the term, the less important the term is. And lastly, another important criteria is that shorter fields are more likely to be relevant than longer fields. Overall, just keep these three things in mind when we're doing our searching. Alright, let's fire up Kibana and let's do our very first search using the match query, which is usually the go-to query. Let's do a search for movies with the title Happy Feet. To do so, we're going to do a get movies slash underscore search with the payload query and property match and specify the field that we're searching across, which is title with the value happy feet. Let's examine our search results. It looks like there are 119 documents that matches our query. Looking at the hits list, the results are sorted by score in descending order by default, where the score should equal the max score. It looks like Happy Feet released in 2006 is our top result. It is apparent that there are results where only the word happy or only the word feet appears in the title field, and that is because the match query by default uses the OR operator. Therefore, we get movies with titles that include the term happy or feet. In order to do an AND operation, just expand the title field into an object with properties query and operator with value and. Now, we only get movies with titles that contain the terms happy and feet. Another way to express the and or operation is to use the minimum should match parameter, which says how many terms should match. Doing a value of 1 in our example effectively does an or operation, and a value of 2 is effectively an and operation. Also, notice that if we switch the order of our terms from happy feet to feet happy, we get basically the same search results. And that is because the match query does not consider the ordering of the terms in its relevance. Okay, so the match query does not really care about the order of the terms, but what if we care about it? Well, that's where the match phrase query comes into play. If we now use the match phrase query to search for the terms feet happy, we can see that we get zero results. A cool parameter that we can use as part of the match phrase is the slot factor, which basically denotes the number of words separated in our terms for which we are tolerating. To demonstrate, let's do a match phrase query for beneath feet. We can see that we have zero hits for those terms. Now, let's add a slot factor of 1. We can see that we have two hits where the terms are separated by one word. Now, you might be asking, Hey Jason, how do I sort my results? And I might say, well, when doing a search, it kind of doesn't make sense to do an alphabetical search or a search result list because, well, what you're seeing at the top of your list is the most relevant item related to your search terms. But there are cases where sorting makes sense, such as when you're just filtering a data set. 
As an example, let's say we want to get a list of movies that were released between the years 1999 and 2000. We can do that with the range query and specify the year field with properties less than or equal to 2000 and greater than or equal to 1999. This is where sorting will make sense. Let's sort our results by adding in the sort option, specifying the year field as the first item in the list of sort items and property order with value descending. Whoa, what just happened? What is this era that we're seeing? Okay, this is where we're going to take a slight detour. In order for us to understand and correct this problem we're having, we need to take a step back and understand the concepts of mappings, analysis, and the inverted index, and generally what's going on underneath the hood. A mapping is essentially your schema definition. It contains the names of the fields, data types of fields, and how the field should be indexed and stored in Lucene. Let's check out the current mapping for our movies index by doing a git movies slash underscore mapping. We can see that Elasticsearch automatically created the mappings for us. And by default, if no mappings were created before indexing, Elasticsearch mapped our fields twice as text and keyword fields. When you hear the term indexing, it really just means the act of storing documents and fields into Elasticsearch. Text fields are indexed for full text search, whereas keyword fields are indexed for sorting and aggregation. At a very high level, when an incoming document is indexed, text fields are analyzed and broken into tokens or terms which are then added to the inverted index in Lucene. If you're having trouble understanding the concept of an inverted index, think of it like the index in the back of a textbook. What you are searching for directly is a particular term, say Einstein, and that in turn points you to the page. In our case, the term in Lucene points us to the ID of a document. For example, here's what happens when the movie title A Special Cop in Action gets indexed in Elasticsearch. The text is broken into terms along with the ID associated with that movie document. So how does this help us when we do our search query? Well, the query terms itself gets analyzed at runtime. So we are then able to find the matching term in our inverted index and return the relevant documents. Going back to our sort by year query, remember that text fields are meant for full text search and keyword fields are meant for sorting and aggregation. So in order for us to sort by year, we just have to specify the year.keyword field. As an aside, our mappings is fine for demo purposes, but for deployed environments, you would need to define a custom mapping before you index your documents so that you and Elasticsearch know exactly what type of fields to expect. If you want to give it a swing, just copy the mapping payload, delete the movie's index, reinitialize the movie's index as empty, cr create a mapping by pasting the mapping you copied before, but this time, make sure the year field is of type date and format bracket year year year. All right, and a detour. Elasticsearch also comes with pagination built in. Let's do a match query with the term happy. By default, Elasticsearch page size is 10, and let's modify our query page size to 5 by adding the size option. And to paginate to the next page, just add a from option, which is the offset from the first result. So far, we've used the match and match phrase queries, which allows us to search across a singular field. In order to search across multiple fields, we can use the multi-match query. Let's do a search for the term action across the title and genres field. If we skip a couple pages using the from option, we can see that we get results of action movies without the term action in the title, verifying that the query indeed did a match across the fields we specified. An interesting thing we can do is give a particular field more weight than the others. 
This is called boosting in Elasticsearch. And let's boost the genre field by 10 points. Now, matches against the genre fields have higher relevance. A more advanced version of the multi-match query is the bool query, which differ in that not only does it match queries across multiple fields, but it matches across multiple query clauses, which are must, must not, should, and filter. Let's start off with an example. Let's do a search for cop movies that were released before 2000. Let's do a bull query with the must clause where the first item is the term query with property title and value cop. Let's add in the filter clause where the range filter is used on the year dot keyword field with property less than and value 2000. Now let's get more picky and only search for cop movies before 2000 that are not comedies. To do that, we just need to add the must not clause with the term query as an item targeting the genre field with value comedy. As you can see, no comedy movies were returned. Further, we can promote action movies to rank higher by adding a should clause targeting the genre field with value action. Basically, the bull query takes a more matches is better approach. So the score from each match and must or should clause will be added together to provide the final score for each document. Also, you might be wondering what is the difference between the must clause and the should clause. And the difference is that the must clause is essentially a logical and operation, whereas the should clause does a logical or operation. This next feature of Elasticsearch is an interesting one that can be used in autocorrect search functionalities. And that is the fuzziness parameter, where the value is the number of character modification or edits needed to make two words match. It is used as part of a match query and it's basically a way to correct misspelled words. Let's do a match query for the terms happy feet using an I instead of a Y with a fuzziness factor of 1. As you can see, Elasticsearch automatically found the one character edit needed to fulfill our search results. You can even just leave the fuzziness value as auto, which is actually suggested by Elasticsearch. Pretty cool stuff, eh? And for my UI peeps out there, Elasticsearch can make your life easier by supporting highlighting, which basically surrounds the match terms in your payload with some HTML tags. We can see real life application of that here in our sample Google search result list where the search term are bolded. Let's do a match query for the term dog in title and let's add the highlight property, specifying that we want highlights in the title field along with the pre-tags and post-tags. You can see that we got an additional highlight property in the title field where the value has some nice HTML tags surrounding our search term. So by now you might be wondering how to do exact terms filtering. That is, what if we want to find a movie with the exact title of Happy Feet in parentheses 2006? If we try to do a match query for the movie title Happy Feet in 2006, we see that we get other results also. And that is because the match query is doing a search for each of those terms. Yeah, we can add a minimum should match parameter of 3, but that would be too inefficient as we would have to parse our search term ahead to get the word count. What we have to do instead is run the same match query, but instead of just a title field, we're going to specify the title.keyword field also like this. If we run the query now, we see that we got exactly one result. The same keyword field is used if you want to sort our results alphabetically. Let's do a search for movies containing the term lion, and let's sort on the title.keyword field in ascending order. We can see that our results are sorted alphabetically by title in ascending order. Alright guys, if you thoroughly enjoyed this video and this series thus far, please leave a comment and click that like and subscribe button. It means the world to me, bruh. Peace.